Hello, Rob here, and this week on R&B Reviews, I'm going to be putting in my two cents on the Spider-Man reboot, The Amazing Spider-Man. First, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and leave your comments or your thoughts about it. It's a great movie because it goes back and forth. Yourself, Mr. Parker. Not much to tell you. that spider guy yet? No, but we will. This guy wears a mask like an outlaw. I think he's trying to do something maybe the police can't. He can't tie red and blue suit. Thanks for checking out R&B Reviews. Um, for this review, I dug up a um, copy of one of the comic books, Spider-Man, from my basement, so I brought it out just for the occasion. And um, I remember when Columbia Pictures canceled Spider-Man 4 and announced that they were going to reboot the series, I remember many people complained that it, that it was just too soon for a reboot, especially now when people are tired of remakes and prequels and reboots in general. And, but when I found out that Andrew Garfield from The Social Network was going to be Spider-Man and that Mark Webb, who directed my number one favorite movie from 2009, 500 Days of Summer, was going to do this movie, I thought, hmm, it might work. And now for those of you that have watched this channel for some time know that I'm kind of leery about music video directors who direct uh, feature films because they're, I think for the most part they're good at the visuals and you know a look but some of them just don't know how to tell a story as well as they don't know how to guide the actors but Mark Webb is one of the ones who has earned my respect because he can tell a story very well and I think he can guide the actors in addition to creating good visuals and this movie just proves it. Webb creates a deliberate paced drama oriented movie instead of an action thriller or I like the other Spider-Man movies and there is much more character development here. We get to see Parker try and learn to control his new superpowers and he gets creative with his invention of those, you know, web, uh, web slinging stuff. And the Spider-Man movie features uh, the lead character Peter Parker and, and Stacy as high schoolers. Um, I don't know, maybe it was done to try and uh, target a young audience, I don't know, but uh, in the movie Parker is an outcast in school and his parents have disappeared. And I think Garfield does a good job at making Parker a sort of shy, stuttering nerd. And I kind of learned more about his version of the character from just looking at his bedroom in many scenes than I did uh, McGuire's, uh, Toby McGuire's version. When he is Spider-Man, he is kind of, um, I'd say, filling a missing void and, you know, missing his parents and, of course, as many people know, his Uncle Ben. And uh, Reese Evans, as uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but he plays Dr. Connors. His character wants to have an arm, he's missing an arm, and he hopes to fill this void with this new serum which cross-mixes animal DNA uh, that causes him to become the lizard. Again, that's not really a spoiler since you kind of see that in the trailer. Uh, visually, the movie, I thought, was very good to look at, and um, all these visuals, I think, fit in with the story very well, and they don't overtake the movie. And the action scenes are not spectacles like in the Maguire uh, movies or the Avengers that came out a couple months ago, but at the same time, they feel kind of more realistic. I could, Like, for example, if there was a superhero called Spider-Man, he was on the street fighting some street thugs, you know, this is kind of like how I imagined it would be. There would be no over-the-top flips and annoying slow motions like in some of them. It felt kind of credible, it felt kind of flexible to me. I do wish the movie had some more suspense like the Maguire films, and I was kind of confused about when this movie is supposed to take place since Parker is still using, you know, film cameras instead of digital, and I swear some of the technology with laptops seem a little bit modern to me. But um, the movie, it, it kind of reminded me of the a 2003 Eric Bana Hulk movie because that movie was not exactly an action movie either but it was more focused on the characters and some of the pains that they go through. Um, if you haven't seen The Amazing Spider-Man yet and if you're expecting it, it to be like an action fest like the Avengers or the other Spider-Man movies you may be disappointed but I can, I can also imagine some people saying that the movie is too slow and they're getting impatient to see Parker becomes Spider-Man because it does take him a while to put on the suit in this movie. But I think Amazing Spider-Man allows us to follow Peter Parker and see him develop into the hero and, of course, get to know the character as well. So I will give this movie, The Amazing Spider-Man, a see it in theaters verdict. So thank you very much for watching. You can look at our other reviews from me or from Brendan on this channel as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching and leave your comments about the movie if you have seen it or about the channel in general. Thanks for watching.